I remember my seven-year-old self watching my older brother playing one specific video game. To that point, I'd only been exposed to stuff like Tarzan on the Game Boy, Tony Hawk's Pro Skater, Mini Clip Armor games, that kind of stuff. But in this game that my brother was playing, you could customize and enhance your character in this vast, magical world filled with quests and adventure. That game was World of Warcraft. If you've ever played, known someone who's played, or heard about it in any shape or form, you'll know that it's not quite your casual brick breaker or super seducer. Shit's addictive as hell, and probably wasn't fantastic for my seven-year-old dopamine craving brain. Since these events happened over ten years ago, I don't remember all the details, I can only presume that I asked my brother 700 times before he let me try the game. But on some fateful day, for one reason or another, he actually let me create my own character. And hence Orkin, the fearless warrior of Duratar was born. And I'm sure that Orkin sucked ass. I mean, I was like eight, I had no clue what I was doing. If there would have been awards in the game, I probably would have gotten one for most deaths to those level one boars in the starting zone. But I ventured forth, through thick and thin, smashing through giants, scorpions, humans, and those weird pig-looking creatures, and acquired a total of 24 levels. At this point, I should probably mention that at school, and in life in general, I was the shy kid. Drawing in the corner, keeping to himself, doing anything to avoid confrontation and other human beings. But in WoW, I could be the complete inverse. I was capable of owning noobs and telling people to fuck off and eat shit in the chat. While at this time I wasn't particularly interested or great at school, in the game I had potential and my progress was straightforward, being dictated by my levels and my gear. I couldn't lose experience, I couldn't fall behind, I could only keep going, completing quest after quest and becoming ever stronger. It wasn't a surprise, I began to value my experience on the screen more than I did anything else. Shit started getting real when I pleaded my parents to buy me my own copy of the game. The toll that it would take on me was unknown to them, so they agreed and gave it to me as a birthday present. I was thrilled. I would finally be able to play with my brother, but best of all, I would have my own character. It was the beginning of a legend, known across all of the WoW community. Death Train. It teaches people how to die. Yeah, I didn't really think that one through so well. I just thought it sounded cool. No longer limited to what my brother was doing. I could play whenever I wanted to and wherever I wanted to. Except that's not true. I had to play in the basement on our guest computer, which was just like completely blocked off of any light or any essence of the real world, AKA the perfect gamer hotspot. It wasn't long before my siblings gloriously named me Basement Boy. Or, well, technically it was Cellar Boy, but Basement Boy sounds better. Death Trainer was the start of my real addiction to the game. I would honestly play all day, every day if I could. But quickly my parents realized that something was off. Little Anton used to draw all the time, and now he's not. In fact, he's not really doing anything else besides crawling in and out of the basement. I still remember the conversation with my mom. She basically says that I'm playing way too much, and we need to establish some rules. I had the option, I could either play one hour every day or two hours every other day. The answer was obviously two hours, because like, how the hell am I supposed to do a run of wailing caverns in only one hour? It doesn't make any sense. But who are we kidding here? Of course I found ways around it. Whenever my parents were gone for the day or at a dinner or something, I would play when I technically wasn't supposed to. Sorry, mom. And if I wasn't playing or sneaking around, I'd either be thinking about it or searching up items on World of Warcraft's official database, Thoughtbot. It's funny, because it has the word thought in it, just, you know. <laughs> I also kept it a complete secret from everyone besides my family and a few close friends, because I just thought everyone would think of me as this huge nerd if they found out that I played World of Warcraft. I wasn't a nerd, okay? World of Warcraft is cool as heck. I didn't want people to take this experience away from me and make me feel bad about it. My sister would say I was addicted, and I'd literally reply with what every single addict on this planet says, completely unironically, I'm not addicted, 
I can just quit whenever I want to. And then when prompted to get off the computer, I'd say, but I don't want to quit. And there was this one time where she was just like making fun of me and I was like, okay, I'm just going to power button this computer off just to prove my self-control. But I'm pretty sure I just like logged in 10 minutes later and just continued playing. There was no experience which paled in comparison to logging in on Death Trainer. It didn't matter the stuff that was going on in my life or who I was out there. Because in WoW, I felt like I mattered. I remember getting this giddy, light, excited feeling whenever I played the game or even just thought or heard anything about it. That feeling sometimes even returns to me now if I listen to the soundtrack or am revisiting memories like I am right now. Even when I was extremely fortunate to be able to go on vacations abroad or on a fun school trip or something, all I wanted to do was just to come back home to be able to play again. I just felt like nothing in the world could make me feel the way that I felt in that game. While I generally try not to regret stuff because you can't change the past and it's just kind of dumb. I sometimes can't help regretting the experiences I missed because of this. I never got involved with much at all when I was a kid and it's a bit of a shame because that would have been a good time to explore and try different stuff because you're like a kid and that's what you're supposed to do when you're a kid. When I was maybe 11 or 12 years old, my WoW account got suspended for suspicious activity. Some proof of address bullshit, I don't know. But my parents saw this as a good opportunity to take a break from the game. For the last time, the game returned to my life a year later with the agreement that I would take art classes at the same time. And I remember feeling so excited by this and like I had been deprived of this thing for so long and finally I would be able to feel the same way again. A few years down the road with Schnubble, my new troll hunter, the spark began to fade as I became more interested in other things. My WoW days were kinda over. I mean, if you don't count all the private servers and like, you know, playing it every now and then. But they were still, they were still pretty over. During all these years, WoW was never the only game I played. Some of my personal favorites included the Assassin's Creed series, secretly playing COD at my friend's house till I was like 13, Kingdoms of Amalur, a highly underrated RPG in my opinion, Uncharted 3, and of course, your classics, Minecraft, Hearthstone, Borderlands, and Shower with your dad simulator. I also played a bunch of other stuff. Like, this stuff. While I didn't play them anywhere near to as much as WoW, and they didn't really fill that void in my heart, I still enjoyed the heck out of them. However, around when I was like 13 or something, a new challenger was lurking in the shadows. Something that threatened to turn my 30 plus day played time in WoW into an absolute joke. Visiting my cousins one holiday, I couldn't help but realize that they kept playing this peculiar game, one that maybe one or two of you might have heard of. This game was League of Legends. At first, this game did not interest me whatsoever. You're telling me? You have to click to move. You have to play on the same map each time with those silly little characters? That sounded stupid as hell, but wanting to join in with the cool kids, I gave it a shot. and. I fucking sucked. I remember being so bad that I couldn't get past the tutorial match. I just kept losing to the bots. It wasn't long before I actually started enjoying the game. I remember feeling so cool when I was one of the first people playing it at my school. That just rhymed. I started slowly introducing it to people in my class like it was some kind of nerdy pandemic. A lot of my friends started playing it on a really regular basis and I just thought it was the fucking coolest thing. Like queuing up as a full 5v5 pre-made, that shit was epic. For a lot of my gaming history, I'd either been playing alone or with some strangers on the internet. Now, for the first time, I was playing with people who I was interacting with on a daily basis. This made the experience so much more justified because I wasn't just being anti-social in my room. I was being anti-social socially. I was never really involved in any team sports when I was a kid, and as nerdy as this sounds, by playing League, I kind of saw the appeal. If people were brought together to kick the ass of the enemy team. It was fun as hell. It felt good to be a good player. It felt good to help a brother out. It felt great to dominate, to get a fucking 
quadra or pentakill. And best of all, it felt fucking legendary when you'd lost all three of your inhibs and you completely turned the game around. That shit was the best. But honestly, I still kind of sucked at the game. I never made it very far in ranked. If you haven't played League before, it's one of those games that is deceptively easy to play for a very long time, even more than something like World of Warcraft in my opinion. Each game lasts 30 to 40 minutes, and it's always just one more until it's like 4 or 5 a.m. on a Tuesday. Despite me feeling much more addicted to WoW, I definitely clocked in way more hours to League. From what I can remember, I think I had well over 40, and that was like a long time ago, so... If I were to check today, it would be much more. It was also during this time where I discovered one of my favorite YouTubers to this day. Activate the ways. <laughs> Video game donkey. In my opinion, he's like the funniest YouTube gamer person. He's incredibly goofy and sarcastic and just like downright absurd sometimes. And it's just the best. I still watch him religiously to this day. What kept me hooked on League was also very different to what kept me hooked on WoW. In the latter, the appeal came from being able to progress my character in the hopes that one day I would have all of them epic loots, which never happened. I could escape into this beautiful, alternate world where I identified with the achievements and potential of my character. In League, each match, you start with new potential. The outcome of the game is determined by the skills and cooperation of the two teams. Similar to WoW, it becomes an environment where you continuously want to improve yourself by means of your skills, your contribution, rank, and match history so that it looks absolutely nothing like this. And it definitely looked like this for me. I was just straight up balling all the time. As with WoW, my interest in League faded over the years. I'd started following a bunch of fitness YouTubers and life gurus, and they all seemed to agree that video games were a huge waste of time. I also had no clue what I wanted to do with my life, so I thought it would be better to probably start thinking about that instead of just gaming all the time. So bit by bit, I stopped playing. I started to view video games as being a weakness, a guilty pleasure that I could only succumb to. I looked back at my childhood and teen years, deeply regretting them. How had I wasted so much of my precious time in these stupid imaginary worlds? where no matter how much progress I made in them, no matter how much dopamine they had produced in my brain, they still ultimately led me here, having missed the real world in front of me, clueless about what actually interested me, and not particularly happy. And I thought the only way I could be involved with them ever again was if I was just addicted to them, because that was the only relationship that I'd ever really known with them. I didn't want these stupid fake realities meaning more than the actual reality that I had. I felt like it had made me quit drawing, lose interest in so many things, and just avoid all of these responsibilities. It just... It just... It was just a fucking waste of time. I see things a little differently now. I could argue it both ways. I could argue that I stopped getting involved in the real world around me because of video games. But I could also argue that I didn't want to get involved with it in the first place. Or there's also an explanation which I think is probably the most likely. It's a bit of both. I played video games partially because I was already shy and anxious, and escaping more made me less willing to deal with everything outside the screen. So kind of like a feedback loop. And if you were to take away games from that loop, it might have just been replaced by something else. There's no way for me to know. Regardless of what caused it, I know that now, as a young adult, I can no longer continue that kind of behavior where I'm just gaming all the time, unless I'm dysfunctional, or a professional gamer or streamer, none of which particularly interest me. But there's this contradiction, because I still love games. They're some of the coolest things ever and allow for so much fun and creativity and beauty. So why should I quit them? 
couldn't I still play games in a healthy way that allows me to function as an adult? Would I be able to sustain that? And even if I did, would there always be a part of me that longed to play? That found the real world around me less interesting because of all those optimized imaginary ones on my screen? What should I do? Truth is, I don't know. That's why the title of this video is My Complicated Relationship with Video Games. Because it's complicated. Unless I change the title, which I might have done. During this past, socially distanced 11 months, I started playing games a little more. It was a way for me to connect with friends and family who I couldn't see in person, and a fun way to spend time every now and then, given that most of us are just hold up in our homes. But what's really crucial is that moving forward, there are going to be some rules. I think having this separation from gaming for a couple of years allowed me to reflect how I could make my gaming experience and life so much better. The whole point of playing video games is to have fun. And that's something we occasionally forget. It's easy to get caught up with what everyone else is doing when we're constantly exposed to Among Us Sundays and Minecraft Speedrun Tuesdays, and when we see every Twitch streamer playing this, the same game, like a week ago, every single person on Twitch, or at least the big guys, were all playing Rust. Human being X might be like, Oh my god, everyone's playing Rust, maybe I should play Rust. <laughs> However, Rust, or any of the games in the mainstream, might not be for you. It's just like with books, movies, or any type of media. You have so much more fun, and get so much more out of the experience, when you're playing something that personally interests you. For me, I know that I love RPGs. I love the story, Damn, I love the character guy's, progression, guy's I love jacked. the beautiful soundtracks, all that stuff. If you're gonna play something, you might as well play something that's right for you. And if you don't know, maybe you can try out some games that you've never tried before. There are so many damn games out there. Everything from sheep simulators, to dating simulators, to some really weird shit. Experiment and have fun. There's a huge difference between playing with some random ass toxic trolls and playing with friends, people you like. I'll admit it. Sometimes it's really fun to just talk shit to people in video games, we've all done it before, but I know for myself personally, I have a much better experience playing with friends or with family, and given all of this shit that's going on, it's also a way to connect to people you might not be able to see in person for a bit. I've been very fortunate to have known people who've been interested in the same games as I have throughout my life, but if you don't have anyone to play with, thanks to this beautiful invention that I'm using right now to communicate these words to your brain, despite me having recorded this from a place much distant to you, both physically and temporally, you can use this invention to meet other cool people who like playing the same games as you do. I don't have so much experience befriending random people on the internet, but I know many people who've done it very successfully, and I'm sure you can as well. I think this is probably the most important rule for myself going forward. It's something that applies to everything, and it's a lesson that was beautifully illustrated by Troy in community with his giant ass cookie. Too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. If you spend all your time gaming and avoiding all your responsibilities and blah blah blah, it's probably not going to be great for you. Unless you're a professional gamer or streamer, which most likely you aren't, and most likely you wouldn't even want to be. Nevertheless, this is something that I've struggled with throughout my entire life. I tend to get obsessed with stuff. and find it very difficult to control how much time I spend on these obsessions. What I've realized for myself is that it's best for me to schedule when I'm gonna play. Whether this is my streaming schedule, organizing a gaming sesh with friends, or even just by myself, I decide that I only play during this scheduled time. And in my experience, that makes it not only much more enjoyable, but like I'm rewarding myself and deserve to play. For some people, it might be easier or harder to control this. I guess it's just about observing your gaming habits and seeing what change fits you best according to your goals, your personality, you. 
Some people might not need to do anything and they have full control. Some people might need to quit cold turkey for a bit. And that's okay. My relationship with video games is a little complicated. While I certainly can enjoy them, they can influence me creatively and allow me to connect to other people, I've invested so many hours into these virtual worlds that I sometimes can't help thinking, what if I would have invested that time into myself? Would I have a better sense of purpose and direction in my life? Would I have better connections to the people around me? I don't know, and I can't know. But everything taken into account, I still had fun. I still got to explore these crazy worlds and learned a lot from them. Who knows, maybe meaning something in video games showed my younger self that maybe someday I would mean something in the real world. And since I've decided to continue playing games every now and then, I just need to make sure that I do it in a way that makes it worth it. That I abide to the rules that I set out for myself. To play games, that are right for me, maybe avoiding some <clears throat> specific ones with friends and not overdoing. Because after all, there is one hell of a world existing outside of our screens. And as for you, viewer, if this video made you contemplate about your own gaming history, experiences, anything, I would really love to hear about them in the comments. It's always so interesting to hear about your stories and experiences. As always, Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed or felt some value, please consider liking and subscribing, doing all that stuff. But yeah. Holy shit. <laughs> that was a long one. Oh my god, I can't wait to edit this. Ah! I'll see you guys soon.